Hello and welcome to Evolution IS. So it's a Monday and we are starting with our sixth lecture of most important current affairs for the UPSC prelims 2020. In this particular lecture, we will see some art and culture topics which came in March and also the next lecture also we will be covering the art and culture only. So we have to see Chapchar Kut Festival, what is Goramati art and which community produces this art that is Banjara community that is will that will be our third topic. Then we will go to Lalit Kala Academy Awards 2020 and also deal with what is Lalit Kala Academy and when was it created, how was it created. Then we will see the Nowroz festival which is also part of your medieval history topic. So the first topic is Chapchar Kut. You know the Mizoram and many other northeast tribes are still are involved in Jhum cultivation, Jhum cultivation. They cleared the forest and then they saw their crops there and then they harvested. So that is called Jhum cultivation that is slash and burn or you can simply say jungle clearing right because they are cutting the trees from jungle and then they are going for, going on the same land for the agriculture so when it will be celebrated can you guess obviously in the spring season so it is celebrated during march after the zoom zoom operation is completed that first you clear the jungle that is called zoom operation then you are going for the agriculture so once the jungle is cleared that is called zoom operation this celebration is done so you know in the northeast there are many bamboo forest. So Chapchar Kut is named after bamboo that has been cut and drying. This Chapchar Kut means bamboo that has been cut from the jungles and is drying and now we will go for the agriculture. So this is an agricultural festival right just before planting. Just before planting you clear the jungle, celebrate Chapchar Kut and then you go for planting. So what happens many tribes of the northeast uh, I mean Mizoram only many tribes of the Mizoram come together festival is celebrated they will produce art handicraft concerts will be there music dance everything flower shows and many cuisines also are displayed there and that is how this celebration of fe this festival is it I mean coming together of many tribes in Mizoram for this Chapchar Kut different tribes of Mizoram come together so so many things is celebrated together that means there will be various aspects of it now we will discuss that See many folk dance and music shows are conducted. One dance is Cherau dance. Can you see these bamboos? See these men are these men are handling the bamboos. They are tapping the bamboos and creating a rhythm. According to that tapping and rhythm, these women dance over there and they don't have to touch these bamboos. They dance in the empty spaces in between. That is the Cherau festival, or you can say that is the Cherau dance. Second thing displayed here is Chehilam. Chehilam is a community dance again just like Cherau. Cherau you can see the women and men both are involved. In fact in Northeast most of the festival almost all the festivals men and women both participate together. Chehilam is also a community dance performed by both men and women. Details are not required here. Cherau was very famous very important that's why I told you the details. Then third thing is Solakya. Solakya is a war dance or martial art dance that is performed by both women, women and men again. So you see Solakia being a war dance also the male and female both come together and perform this dance and the last one is Kualam. Kualam is a welcome dance for guests during community festival. So there are various types. So some people will take this responsibility of performing Kualam dance and that will be for the welcome of the guests who are coming in this community festivities. Okay. Our second topic is Gora Mati art. Gora Mati art is created by Banjara community of rural Maharashtra and recently it was much in news because our minister spoke about it Vijaya Pawar who also belongs from Maharashtra. This is a handicraft art. Can you see this arts? Okay, this is about Goramati art. But what is important more is that what is Banjara community which produces this art. So Banjara community first of all break this word Banjara. Okay, Ban and Jara. So this word is derived from vanai meaning to trade. Vanai, banya, these words are related to trade. Previously in the medieval times this community, Banjara community used to trade and they were like nomads. They used to go from this village to that village and they used to port the objects from here and there and that is how they used to trade. So vanai community that is why they used to trade so that how, that's how come the words comes the word part ban and then jara jara means to travel because they used to travel and trade that is why they are called banjara community so that is how we can call them sometimes gypsies also it is a nomadic tribe always on the move and 
they were used to transport i told you that they they used to transport subjects and objects from here and there that is why they used to hold the vital supply chain for villages in that time but with but changing time there are no there are no nomads in banjara community almost they have settled and british tried to settle them very hard and also tried to snatch their land for plantation cultivation and these tribes very fiercely resisted british attempts to seize their lands so what did the british do british do in 1871 banjara and several other tribes were brought under the criminal tribes act that is part of our history criminal tribes act came to control these tribes who were always on the move and banjara community was also included in this criminal tribes act in 1871 after independence jawaharlal nehru denotified i mean from this criminal tribes act they were denotified but we had this habitual offender act that was also very de derogatory in that time it came after independence habitual offenders act and banjara community was put into that list can you tell me now is there any habitual offenders act anymore and then if not in habitual offenders then where is this banjara community placed it's not like banjara community is only in maharashtra see their origin is from rajasthan but now they have different names in different states for example lambada community or lambadi community in andhra pradesh is also banjara community originally lambani community in karnataka gwar and or gawaria in rajasthan is also a banjara community only today banjara community can be found in sc scheduled caste category scheduled tribe category also and other backward class also and are they are classified as denotified tribes or vimukta jati now see this community you don't say that this is a tribe community they are in sc also st also and backward class also so they are a previously nomadic tribe now they are in sc st backward class everywhere and denotified tribes still we call them the third topic is lalit kala academy award 2020 The president of India recently conferred the Lalit Kala Academy Award, award and it was its 61st version. This is annually conducted, and the award was provided to 15 artists. The purpose of Lalit Kala Academy Award is to organize art exhibitions and also award award ceremonies are conducted on the same exhibition line and same exhibition occasion, and this is conducted every year. And the purpose is to promote art and culture. as well as to honor the talents so what kind of art this is about fine art painting a sculpture graphics photography drawing installation meet multimedia all those things lalit kala academy fellowship or lalit kala academy ratan is an honor for the fine arts in india given to eminent artists for their lifetime achievement in the field of visual art so this award was given to 15 meritorious artists and also lalit kala academy fellowship or lalit kala academy ratan is for the lifetime achievement in fine art so who provides this award see the award comes by the hands of president of india but the institution involved is lalit kala academy that is india's national academy of arts in english so now let us know about lalit kala academy or national academy of arts when was it created it was created in 1954 and inauguration was done by then our minister of education who was maulana abul kalam azad very famous freedom of india a struggle sorry india as a struggle for independence very famous personality maulana abul kalam azad inaugurated this lalit kala academy in 1954 and he was that time ministry of education that's why and the act later got a statutory authority in 1957 and it was it was done by societies registration act of 1860 so the act is involved so the institution is now a, a statutory institution now see we have other two academies also related to this art and culture other two being sahitya academy and sangeet natak academy and this is the youngest one out of this the lalit kala academy is youngest and newest one out of this three other being sahitya academy and sangeet natak academy which are older than lalit kala academy our next topic is festival of navroz which is celebrated on 21st march every year so what is the origin of navroz in 1079 ad what happened a persian that is iranian persia previously now iran there was a persian king whose name was jalaluddin malashah malik shah so jalaluddin malik shah introduced this festival 
to generate revenue and collect taxes from the people see in the name of the festival he used to connect collect revenue and taxes from the people that is how navroz was started so during the medieval times during the sultanat or mughal times we had people from persia also coming to india through marriage and all so that is how the navroz festival was celebrated in india also and why it is observed on march 21 that you should know that is the beginning of a spring and the day of equinox can you comment in the comment section that what is equinox so march 21 is the beginning of the spring and also the day of equinox that is why on this day particular day the navroz festival is celebrated that see the spring is coming also unesco has a intangible cultural heritage list and in india this particular navroz festival is classified as intangible cult cultural heritage of humanity of india by unesco also this is not limited to india only navroz is uh, celebrated worldwide so we can say that unesco when classifying this navroz festival as intangible cultural heritage classifies it not only for india but also globally in india navroz is particularly known as jamshed navroz so do we have only those much uh, only one intangible cultural heritage no see some other intangible cultural heritages of india classified by unesco traditional vedic chanting got intangible cultural heritage status by unesco in 2008 ram leela also kuttiyam dance this is a kuttiyam dance is a sanskrit theater of the south india that also got intangible cultural heritage status ramman ramman is a religious festival and ritual theater of gadwal himalayas gadwal himalayas it got in 2009 then comes mudiyattu mudiyattu is a dance of kerala dance and drama everything and then comes kalbeliya folk songs and dance of rajasthan the black clad women dancing with so many matkas that is called kalbeliya of rajasthan chhau dance chhau dance jharkhand odisha and bangal and then comes vedic chanting has also got the intangible cultural heritage status and buddhist chanting of ladakh has also got the intangible cultural heritage status Manipur has a ritual singing dumming and dancing that is called sankirtana sankirtan got in 2013 unesco intangible cultural heritage status there is a community in punjab thatheras of jandiala guru punjab they create traditional traditional brass and copper craft and that is for utensil making technique brass and copper craft for utensil making that got in 2014 this is status of intangible cultural heritage from unesco yoga got in 2016 and now rose also got in 2016 and last one kumbh mela got intangible cultural heritage status in 2017 see some other festivals celebrating new year navreh is celebrated in kashmir for the new year losar in tibetan community rongali bihu in assam baisakhi in punjab you already know pohela baisakh in bangal gudi padwa in marathi and konkani new year this is for maharashtra gudi padwa and puthandu in tamil nadu pana sankranti in odia odisha and ugadi in telugu and vishu in malayali community that is kerala the next topic i want to include is pyramid of joser what is pyramid of joser you should know pyramid of joser is present obviously in egypt the peculiarity is that this is the oldest pyramid ever this is the first pyramid that was built and there was renovation work going on so this has been reopened after 14 years of restoration that much effort it is present near the egypt's capital cairo it was created between 2650 bc and 2575 bc by a king named pharaoh joser who was the second king of ancient egypt's third dynasty which ruled between 2650 and 2575 bc and the structure has got designation from the unesco world heritage uh, as unesco world heritage site by this unesco also government of india has submitted two nominations for unesco world heritage site and one is dholavira dholavira you already know harappan city present in present in gujarat and second is monuments and forts of deccan sultanate in maharashtra karnataka region for inclusion in the world heritage list of the year 2020 let us see which is accepted or not So now let us talk about these two locations. One is Dholavira, that is a Harappan city. See, Dholavira was created in mature Harappan phase, and it is present in Ran of Kutch, Gujarat. 
it was excavated in 1985 very late after the independence of india by rs bist a very famous archaeologist dholavera is particularly famous for efficient water conservation system other criss cross structure and street pattern that is pre present in every indus valley civilization location this particular dholavera is very famous for efficient water conservation system they used to create very small dams also water storage tanks also a very big ones which are already i mean you can see that uh, reminiscent of this tanks are present already there and that is how in this desert run of kutch they they could survive for 1200 years that is 3000 bc to 1800 bc against a very harsh and hot arid climate generally indus valley civilization location have two tiered organization one is citadel the higher one and a smaller one in surface and the other one is community living a space but this particular location dhola vera has three tier three, three tier zonation that is why it is very different from other indus valley civilization locations what about monuments and forts of deccan sultanate these monuments and forts of deccan sultanate demonstrate an amalgamation of islamic architecture and hindu architecture and i was wrong to say they are present in maharashtra they are present in karnataka and andhra pradesh currently and they have four components one is bahamani monuments that are in gulbarga karnataka which has gulbarga fort and great mosque in the fort jama masjid and haft gumbad complex with seven tombs gulbarga was the first capital of bahamani dynasty that is why so many architecture there second one is bahamani and barij shahi monuments at bidar in karnataka it has places like bidar fort madarsa mahmud gawan bahamani tombs at astur and barij shahi tombs third one is adil shahi monuments at bijapur karnataka very famous ruler adil shah they were created between 15th to late 17th centuries there are so many structures almost 80 small and big monuments are present in adil shahi monument monuments at bijapur karnataka the most famous one is gol gumbaz which is second largest dome in the world this gol gumbaz is in present in bijapur karnataka and was created during adil shah dynasty and the fourth component is kutub shahi monuments at hyderabad andhra pradesh now you can say telangana right the very famous golconda fort kutub shahi tombs and char minar you already know these all symbolize kutub shahi dynasty this is the fourth component of this particular uh, entry we have made in unesco world heritage site our application char minar was created in 1591 ad and it is like a ceremonial gateway so so many things about unesco so we should know about the unesco the full form is united nations educational scientific and cultural organization it is not a principal agency of united nation but a specialized agency of the united nation and headquarters is in paris france it works for international cooperation in education science and culture and also world heritage sites are declared and selected by unesco for that unesco has some criteria it has that this particular location which is to be classified as world heritage site that must be of outstanding universal value there should be universal value of it and meet at least one out of 10 selection criteria which are set by unesco so what happens after this particular status by from unesco the site gets a protection status also preservation also and also it will increase the tourism the force behind this unesco world heritage site is united nation convention on concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage 1972 after that only this status start to come the world heritage site status the convention was united nation convention concerning the protection of world cultural and natural heritage of 1972 and how many places india has classified as india has 38 world heritage sites in that 30 are cultural seven are natural and one is mixed site that is kanchenjunga most recent addition in this list is from india is pink city of jaipur so these five topics are completed and also some extra topic also so that is all for this lecture and see you in this le next lecture tomorrow and we will do with some uh, art and culture topics only from march if there are some topics remaining i will complete it otherwise we will move to april month thank you